Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at how to program panels just like this one. Uh, I've really been receiving quite a few messages, emails and comments under my videos asking how can I write uh, online uh, interactive panels on the mainframe uh, so that people can use instead of batch uh, dialogues on uh, on the mainframe and there's really two ways to do it one would be to use kicks and i've already uh, made an extensive video about how to use in kicks uh, kicks written with a k um, so that you could write uh, uh, interactive dialogue panels uh, with either COBOL or assembler even c um, and I, I will put the description below this video in, I will put a link in the description below this video on how to install Kicks, and um, and then you could uh, see in the there's some examples that I show in the videos on how to get it up and running. Uh, that's one way. The other way is TSO that we use in MVS. Obviously, is an interactive environment, and uh, and this what you've seen here is of course an interactive panel, and so people naturally are asking how is it possible to uh, write their own panels. Um, uh, and so in this session, we're going to be looking at how to do this. What I want to do point out at this time is that when people say, how can I write panels on the mainframe? Uh, I'll be answering mostly to when it comes to MBS. Um, obviously, VM 370 is by definition an interactive environment since it's a, it's a time sharing system. Um, and uh, But I know very little about VM 370. I do plan to make a video in the future about VM, uh, but I need to reacquaint myself a little bit more with VM. I know enough about VM on how to get MBS to run on the VM370, and there's a video about that in this channel. Uh, but when it comes to actually writing uh, dialogues on VM370, I'm right now at a loss. So this is gonna, this is gonna be about MBS. Now let's go and see um, how this works um, on uh, how we can get this running. So uh, while we're doing this here, folks, I'm sorry for the brief interruption. I'm, I have, I'm updating one of my remote uh, virtual machines where I run OpenVMS um, as a cluster. I think there's a video, no, 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 I'm pretty sure there is a video in this channel about my uh, OpenVMS cluster that's connected worldwide network of, uh, of enthusiasts and I'm just updating this in this video that's what's going on so let's not be disturbed by this and let's make this uh, all go away um, so um, back to this how does this um, TSO uh, panel language look like so in TSO there's a there's a language called C list um, which you use much like the batch language in Windows or the shell scripting capabilities in any Unix or like the shell, the born again shell, the bash shell. Uh, there is one also has always been um, for TSO. Now what we need to remember one thing, the TSO that we use here is a very old TSO. It's from the early 80s and uh, when it, whenever you go and read manuals, out on the internet from, from the IBM website or other websites. Obviously, those would be referring to a much, much more, more modern TSO than the TSO we use here. And so you need to be, a lot of the new capabilities um, for C-List, uh, the programming language I've been adding with TSO-E, which is the TSO version two that came with uh, MBS XA, which unfortunately um, we don't have. And in fact, seems to be pretty much lost I've not been able to locate any version of MBS XA out there and I launched an appeal to IBM to release MBS XA and VM XA to the enthusiast, mainframe enthusiast community and let's see if this uh, will resonate with IBM sooner or later. Uh, but in the meantime, we are stuck with the TSO version 1 basically and um, I will link to some uh, C list manuals um, for this TSO version in the description below this video. And let's go see how this works. So let's go to RFE and you can see examples of the panels um, and the C list 
if you go to sys2 here in the dataset list and they'll go to uh, sys2 command proc let's go in here and let's just look at the main uh, panel that we see when we log in for the first time this is this is the C list this is the programming language that Jurgen the maintainer of TQ4 uh, wrote himself so that we're presented with it when we log in. As you can see here, um, there is a programming language for this. Um, so for instance, set is when you assign a value to a variable. So this is an option. Option, this is a variable forever is one. Uh, means that you assign number one to variable forever. And variables in Silis can contain, much as in Rex, both uh, numbers as well as strings. And uh, there is an, an extensive string handling capability in CList, even in version 1, as you can see here. Um, and of course, it has also, just like any form complete language, CList is a form complete language. Um, uh, conditions testing, it is able to, it has a do while um, uh, looping capability. It has the ability to, um, to call functions and pass arguments. Um, so you can see here, this is one example of a panel. Now, what you can see here also is that you can mix panel, C-list, together with uh, uh, commands. Those would be object modules. Like this one, for instance, would be an object module uh, written by Jordan in this case. And as you can see here, sometimes commands are invoked. And those would be binaries, kind of like binaries in Windows or in Unix, that are being invoked. And you can mix freely because this is a batch, kind of a batch language as you have in Windows, where you can mix both um, the batch language together with the commands you're going to be invoking. So I wrote a couple of, um, just to make a very, very short introduction to Silist. Obviously, um, what I do want to point out is that the Moshik mainframe channel is not a programming tutorial uh, channel. So I do not teach assembler, I do not teach PL1, I do not teach CLS, I do not teach Rex, I do not teach COBOL. I just show what, how to use those compilers. So this is more about the compilers and what those compilers are capable of, uh, all the assemblers. This channel is never or not for the foreseeable future is not going to be about about learning certain programming languages because that is a, a, a much different effort from the effort I'm making on this channel. So um, let's look at this first one. So here is a very simple um, C list. I'll see this start with proc and um, and then you have write. Uh, and the interesting thing is that. In CLIST, you don't need uh, to close uh, the display to the terminal within within quotes. You just write whatever you want to write. So the write identifies the rest of the string. Uh, you do need to end any any CLIST with an end. So let's go and how can we invoke now this CLIST? This could be a, a, a program we wrote and how do we invoke it? We're going to see this briefly. Um, out of here you get out of the panel here by pressing X so you can see here X to terminate and now we say motion is one and it says the time it also tells us how much CPU is being used and today is March 3rd 2018 hello world hello world for my first try try what vanilla so this is the easiest way to invoke uh, a C list. And the reason why this is working now, why am I able to just write MoshX1 and this works? Why is that? That's because in the concatenation of the TSO procedure, which is being started every time we log into TSO, we use a particular procedure. In this procedure, uh, we have this data set here. This one is concatenated, meaning that 
it's kind of the path variable in Windows or the path variable in Shell on Unix. As long as you have the path variable de uh, defined and accessible, you'll be able to see what's uh, in this data set. Data set. And so in our concatenation, meaning in, in the addition to the path, kind of the path variable for our TSO login procedure, we have this data sets here defined, both of them. Uh, in Sys2 command lib, we have object modules, things that are compiled. And in Sys2 command prop, we have C list panels. So um, by just simply creating a data set in here, um, I'm able to afterwards call it from the TSO prompt and it's going to get, uh, TSO is going to find it and execute it. So let's look at the different uh, C list here. We have again proc zero. Write string hello, what's your name? Read name. This is the way, kind of like mm, um, in basic, for instance, you could say re input. That would be the same thing. Or um, in, um, in, well, any program language has a way to read from the console. And here will be the read, the input equivalent to basic. And then we write a substring, well, hello, name then. And this name here refers to this variable. So we're saying here read from the terminal and put it into uh, name, this variable here. And then here it uses the same variable again. That you hear, what else is this list might say. Okay, very simple, C list. Let's go and invoke it again. Oops. And because it's in the concatenation, I can just say Moshix2. Moshix, well, hello Moshix. Then glad you're here, whatever else the Celis might say. So this is um, the, a very, very simple introduction to Celis now. Um, let's go here and look at this again. And let's see what Silis is able to do. Um, again, you need to read the manual for Silis, but let's look at a few constructs. So this will be an if uh, an if construct. Oops. So we see here if a uh, string of, for instance, there are some certain built-in variables like sysuid, which is the ID of the user logged in, uh, equals string of, let's say, I could say here Mushix. Then, uh, if in this case, since I'm logged in as Mushix, um, then this would happen here. Okay. If I'm not logged in as Mushix, then it would skip this and go here to the next um, to the next instruction. Now, here is another uh, way to do an if if the CZUID equals my whatever we want to compare it to, then right here. Well, we are at label, label yikes, because we know we're there because we just entered this code section. Um, and so this will be another way to show the plus here is required because we're continuing on the next line. This could also all be written in the same one line, but obviously it's not going to fit in one line. That's why we have the plus. Um, This, I think, is self-explanatory. We write here, processing error. If string name, then, sorry about this, and whatever the variable name is. Else, so this is the difference here. This is if, but we could also write here an else, right? And this is what this does. So you have also else. You have certain, as I mentioned before, certain uh, built-in variables, such as system user ID, data set prefix setting. Uh, this will be the high level qualifier. In my case, here will be Herc01 or Moshix. Date. When this is the sys time. Last condition code. There is a bunch. Now, there is a few in TSO, the version that we have in TK4. There is dozens, if not hundreds, in TSO slash E the uh, TSO version 2 that goes comes with things later than MBS 3.8 such as MBS XA and MBS ESA and of course ZOS. Uh, so, so be careful when you go read manuals, 
you know you must know which version of TSO you're reading a manual for for Sedist because these things have all been vastly improved. One example is that you can mix Rex and Sedist in modern TSO, which you can obviously not do in the TSO version that we have in TK4 because there is no Rex support in in this uh, TSO version. So this gives you uh, a way to, this shows you how to write very simple uh, C list. Now, how do we add uh, more C list programs into this library here? Since we're browsing, it's not that easy to add here because we can only edit or browse. Um, so to do that, we will go to two. And since this is only a two level data set, you can't use this directly in this dialog over here. You have to use it here. So we say sys2 cmd prop and then let's say YouTube. One, two, three, yeah. And oops. Ah, let's need all of this. We need 99. zero and right hello YouTube motion magnifying channel let's see if we can get this to work we said that this is called YouTube okay YouTube and that's it uh, hello YouTube Bosch Explainable Channel. So this gives you a very basic introduction on how to use Silist. This is not an introduction to Silist, but uh, I wanted to do a video for once that's a little shorter. I've been, having, I've been making a bunch of videos. They were well over 45 minutes and I know that sometimes that's a little bit tedious. We don't need to make this longer than it needs to be. You saw how to add uh, interactive uh, programs to your TK4 environment in the MBS 3.8 and I will be pointing um, out to a C-List manual in the description below this video. I urge you to go read it and have fun developing. Please do uh, get back uh, with comments and messages on uh, C-List programs you've been writing once you learn it and I'll be happy to point them out in my videos, future videos. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. I urge you to consider uh, subscribing to the mainframe, uh, Moshik's mainframe channel to get notified of future videos. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Goodbye.